I again. In the last segment, uh, Anthony Hokima, the four major cults, has taken up the issue are our Seventh-day Adventists a cult. Last time he talked about the authority issue, i.e., is there an authority above the Bible in Seventh-day Adventism? That's one telltale testimony as to whether you can be branded a cult, and he determined that they were, in that sense, cultic, at least cultic, in that they exalt the interpretations of, of Ellen G. White above scripture when it comes to the interpretation thereof. In this section, he deals with the denial of justification by grace alone. Here we encounter one of the real problems involved in evaluating Seventh-day Adventist teachings, the baffling fact that the Adventists often theoretically take up a certain position, but then proceed to repudiate that position in the further elaboration of their theology. Regarding the doctrine in question, we find Seventh-day Adventists theoretically agreeing that we are justified by grace alone, and not at all by obedience to law. Yet, we also find them teaching that one's forgiveness can be cancelled after it has been bestowed, and that forgiven sins are not immediately blotted out because subsequent deeds and attitudes may affect the final decision. Adventists further teach that it is possible for a person, through subsequent sinful deeds and attitudes, to lose the justification he once received. This teaching implies that one can only be sure of retaining his justification if he continues to do the right kind of deeds and to maintain the right attitudes throughout the rest of his life. Now he takes up the subject of the very distinctive teaching of Seventh-day Adventists, the investigative judgment. Now this subject is is connected to our Watchtower background. If, if you are an ex-Jehovah's Witness, you know something about this because the, the disappointment of the Millerite movement in the 1830s and 40s, in when when 1843 and 1844 passed, is very similar to the disappointment of, of Russell and his cohorts back in 1914, when the date that they thought was the end of the Gentile times came, and what they thought would happen did not did not. The investigative judgment. This is about therefore their their doctrine of what really happened in 1844, invisibly. It has already been shown that the Adventist doctrine of the investigative judgment, a doctrine which has no basis in Scripture, is not consistent with their claim that they teach justification by grace alone. This is actually the Seventh-day Adventist position. The investigative judgment determines who are, who of the myriad sleeping in the dust are worthy of a part in the first resurrection. And B, what is examined in the investigative judgment are the lives of the individuals in question particularly their faith in Christ, their confession of every single sin, and their faithfulness in keeping the law's requirements. And here he has a footnote referencing a later Adventist writer, William H. Branson, in a book published in 1950, a book called The Drama of the Ages. And Branson says this, quote, A Christian who, through faith in Jesus Christ, has faithfully kept the law's requirements, will be acquitted, there is no condemnation, for the law finds no fault in him. If, on the other hand, it is found that one has broken even a single precept, and this transgression is unconfessed, he will be dealt with just as if he had broken all ten. End of quote. To which Okima says it will be remembered that Mr. Branson was president of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists from 1950 to 1954. Then Hokima goes on, and the C point here, which is what therefore determines whether a person will be saved, is not primarily what Jesus Christ has done for him on the cross, but primarily what the individual has done in his life. He must have kept the law's requirements, must have continued to do the right kinds of deeds, so that his forgiveness has not been cancelled, and must have confessed every single sin. It is thus clear that what determines whether one is saved is the kind of life the investigative judgment reveals him to have lived, particularly his blameless keeping of the law's requirements. And this position contradicts the scriptural assertion that one is justified by grace alone. How can anyone faithfully keep the law's requirements? Do we not all fall very short, very far short of keeping these requirements? Does not the Apostle John say, if we say that we have no sin, and to have sin means to fall or fail in some respects to keep the law's requirements, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. That's 1 John 
1 verse 8. The Apostle Paul, in fact, makes it unmistakably clear that no one can ever faithfully keep the law's requirements when he says in Romans 3 verses 19 and 20, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it speaketh to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may be brought under the judgment of God, because by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For through the law cometh the knowledge of sin. He then goes on to say, But now, apart from the law, a righteousness of God has been manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ, unto all that believe. He ends this brief exposition of the way of salvation by saying, We reckon, therefore, that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Elsewhere, Paul tells us that he counted all things to be lost, that he might gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own, even that which is of the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Philippians 3 verse 9. Paul therefore knew that he was saved, not on the basis of a future heavenly investigation of his keeping of the law, or of his own personally achieved righteousness, but on the basis of the righteousness which he had received from God through faith. How then can Seventh-day Adventists teach that man is saved on the basis of his faithful keeping of the law's requirements, as revealed by the investigative judgment? The doctrine of justification by grace alone teaches that a person is saved because of what Christ has done for him. The doctrine of the investigative judgment, however, teaches that Christ does not know whether a given individual has been justified until his life has been investigated. If, as the Bible teaches, the Lord knoweth them that are his, that's 2 Timothy 2.19, and the good shepherd knows his own, that's John 10.14 and 27, why should Christ not know, apart from this investigative judgment, who are to be raised in the resurrection of the just? The only possible answer is because he does not fully know what kind of lives these individuals have lived. But if this is so, what is decisive in determining whether one is to be saved? is his faithful keeping of the law's requirements. This position, however, vitiates the doctrine of justification by grace alone. Next time he deals with the keeping of the Sabbath, I'll put in a link to the first of our Genesis series, uh, which has now reached 106 videos. The first 15 that were our personal testimony of the impact of Genesis upon our lives. The first one is how, Gentile, how Genesis cured to Jehovah's Witnesses. And the third, by the way, in that series is how we found grace in the book of Genesis. I'll also put on the uh, a link to the Genesis playlist. See you next time.